Hi, Stephen Mating here, uh, giving you another tutorial on how some things work in KOS with KSP. Um, I don't normally prefer when documentation is done via a video tutorial, but in this case I decided to do it because uh, th there's going to be inherently the need for some visual aids to make it sense out of this. So, let us get into it. Uh, what I was doing over the last week is I was working on some docking scripts where I was going to try to work out how to make a docking occur with a really weird port at an unusual location, not on the nice central axis. And in so doing, I discovered that really there needs to be a better tutorial on how directions work with KSP and a few better routines. So that's what this video is for, is to explain in better detail how directions work and also to explain in better detail a few of the new functions that have been added to make directions more sensible. <coughs> First off, I apologize for coughing. I have a bit of a cold as I record this. Okay, I'm going to use these two utility functions here to do a little explanation in visual aids. Uh, so I want to show you what they're doing so it doesn't look like random magic. <coughs> Dur axis draw will simply draw the XYZ axes of some given direction. You pass it in a direction, give it a color and a scale and a label, and it will create the X, the Y, and the Z axes as drawings on the screen for you using a slight offset from the color you gave it. So, you know, red-ish or blue-ish or green-ish, depending on what you gave it. So the purpose of this is going to be to show at any given moment what the axes of a particular direction look like. And then this function, this method here, or method, I shouldn't say method, this program here, dir axes undo, will simply delete the most recent drawing of three axes that were made. So this isn't magic. I just wanted to show you that that's what, that's what I'm using in my tutorial demonstration here. So here I have a uh, ship in orbit that I chose to use a space plane for this because it's very obvious which way is up on a space plane, much more so than on a rocket. <coughs> so, first off, let me do the following. Actually, I have to start by making, oops, draws, plural, that should be. I have to make an empty list to begin this thing. So I'll run Duraxi's draw, giving it the default zero rotation to begin with. I will give it a color of red-ish, a scale of about 15, and I will call that raw. We now have on screen the raw X, raw Y, and raw Z axes. And these are never in a position that you can actually predict very easily. About the only thing you can predict about them is the fact that the Y axis is always going to be aligned with the North Pole axis of your current body you're orbiting. So this direction here happens to be the direction of the axis coming up out of the North Pole of the planet. But the other two axes, which you know will be aligned with the equator, but you won't know exactly at what longitude, uh, that varies depending on when you happen to have launched and when you happen to have come back down to the planet and in various times in your universe since you began the game. So those are almost impossible to predict what they're going to be. The Y axis does always point straight up in the direction of the North Pole axis of your planet, though. <coughs> Okay, so there's our, our default axes. They're not particularly useful for very much. But the first thing I wanted to show is how a direction is always, in fact, actually <clears throat> not just a single vector like we've been trying to represent it, but a direction is actually a rotation of the entire universe's axes to a particular location. And to show that, let's start with the up axis. We all know the up axis. We use it a lot for things in the code. If I hand it the up direction, and let's give that a slightly different color, let's make it bluish, and let's make it a bit longer. When I give it the up direction, you will see that it has a z-axis pointing this way, an x-axis pointing this way, and a y-axis that happens to match the original y-axis as well. And that z-axis is the one that's pointing straight up away from the center of the planet. The z-axis is what we've always been returning when you say colon vector. It's the z-axis of the rotation that the direction actually represents. So if I were to lock steering to up,
you'll find that it will not only point up the z-axis, but also rotate itself so that the top of the ship is pointing up the y-axis. Now it's a little off because uh, I've been rotating around the planet while I was talking. <coughs> Let me redraw the up axis to my new position. There we go. So you can see that actually the y axis is always the top of the ship, the x axis is the starboard direction, and the z axis is the way the ship is pointing, the nose of the ship. And in reality, all of this information is retained in a direction. It's just we had been, hadn't been exposing it very nicely before. Now, when you use these directions, they are also rotations. They can be applied to other directions. So for example, if I have up, I can take a rotation of 30 degrees around the x-axis and multiply it by up to get you this new direction, which is what had been the up axis, but rotated around the x axis by 30 degrees, and that gives us this new one. Now, anytime you do a multiplication of a direction by another direction, you're saying, take this direction here and, and rotate it by what the new direction says to rotate it by. So these can stack up. It's important to note when you do this that you should always prepend the new rotation you're applying on the left hand side of the multiplication, because this is not um, something where you can switch the order. If you switch the order, it actually means something different. The thing on the rightmost side is the original starting frame of reference, and everything you attach to the left of it is an additional rotation you're doing to it. <coughs> so, why does this matter? Well, for one thing, I've added the ability to get three new suffixes from a direction. In addition to just the straight-up normal vector, you can also get now all three of the new directions. They come in the form of a suffix called for vector, top vector, and star vector. You can also use the words z-axis, y-axis, and x-axis. They mean the same thing. Uh, and this will give you those three axes you're seeing on the screen visually. And that can be handy if you want to know what is my right, what direction is my right wing currently pointing. You can get the, the star axis of your facing, for example. Let me show that. Vec draw args must type better. My current ships facings star vector is what I want to draw. Let's multiply it by 30 or so. Let's make it be green. And it didn't like something about that. I'm not quite, quite sure what. Ah, I see what it didn't like. Didn't give it a label. So there it is, my current facing star vector, which is the starboard vector. And I could do the same thing with my top vector or my four vector. Incidentally, four vector is the thing that we used to just call vector. The old word vector will still work. <clears throat> okay, now, how is this useful? Well, for one thing, you can always rotate a vector. Let's say, for example, let me just make a, a made-up vector. Set my vector to a vector that is pointing, let's say, 50 units, no, that's, that's a bit large, 20 units down x, uh, no units down y, and 10 units down z. Now if I was to visually show that one on screen, you would see that uh, it's pretty easy to see where it would go now that you can see the main axes. There it is, going 20 units down x, 10 units down y, and no units up, or 10 units down z, and no units up y. And you can see that when you now have the regular axes to go look at. Makes sense. Now, 
what you can do with these, now that I've already made this thing called MyVec, you can rotate them by a direction as well. So, for example, I want to take my VEC and let's say I wanted to rotate it around, let's say, the Y, uh, well, let's say around the Z axis. I would say 0, 0, comma, and then let's say 30. I'm rotating it 30 directions around the Z axis. And, of course, let me actually store that in something. And now, let's make another vector, which is my vec2, the one I just rotated. And you can see it rotated around the axes as described. Now another uh, suffix I'm going to explain is the new inverse suffix. Normally, a direction says, uh, starting from the raw axes of the universe, how d were those axes rotated in order to get a rotation in which the z-axis is now pointing the direction we're interested in? What the inverse suffix says is, if you were going the other way around, what would the rotation look like? If you were going from the direction's axis to the raw axis. So if I was to uh, set my vec to, to this rotation's inverse times my vec, and draw that instead, you'll see that it rotated around the z-axis 30 degrees the other way. <coughs> okay, so I've shown that. Now let's get a more concrete example. You can see off in the distance that there is the moon. Why don't we make a little vector that points at the moon? and show that on screen as well. So there is a very long vector pointing at the moon, so long it even shows up in map view. And you'll notice that if you look at its components, it sort of makes sense now that you can see the main axes, what they are. It is a negative large number in the x direction, that makes sense. It is a positive small number in the y direction, which makes sense if you look at this, it's only going slightly up the y axis and it's a slightly bigger number up the z-axis. It isn't going up the z-axis a bit. Now that's nice, but oftentimes what you actually want, especially if you're not talking about the moon, but you're talking about a target ship that you're aiming at, oftentimes what you really want is what's its direction relative to your own ship's facing. Let's say, for example, that I rotate my ship so it's pointing mostly right at the moon, but only just ever so slightly off. Now my ship is aimed mostly at the moon, just a little bit off. You might be interested in knowing, well, what's the moon's position relative to my own ship's frame of reference? Well, you can get that now, because what you can say is the following. Set, let's call it rel moon pause to the, mo the moon's position but it's the moon's position with a rotation applied to it, and that rotation is my ship's facing inverted, because when you're dealing with vectors, you oftentimes do have to invert the meaning because you're not rotating axes, you're rotating vectors. If I do this, and now I print that, rel moon pause, <coughs> and I can type the word print correctly, you'll now see something that looks much more in line with what you would expect from my ship relative uh, vectors, which would look like this. Actually, I forgot to, to draw those.
draw them now. So there is the vectors relative to my ship's facing. My ship's facing Z is 4, my ship's facing X is starboard, and my ship facing Y is top. And in that position, if I print this rel moon pause I made, notice it is a very large number in the Z direction, which makes sense. It is a relatively large-ish number, but not nearly as large in the X direction, just to off by that a little bit and a relatively large number, but again, not as big in magnitude in the y direction, which makes sense when you look at which way it's going relative to those green axes. So you can get a vector rotated relative to a different reference frame and see its x, y, and z components if you would like. The place where this is most useful, where I found it most useful, is when I was trying to do docking. I wanted to know my target's position relative to my ship's current facing, so I knew how to manipulate the translation controls for RCS, the equivalent of the H, N, I, J, K, L keys. I wanted to know how to manipulate those relative to which way my ship is facing, which means I needed to know where the target was relative to my ship, not relative to the universe. And this is a useful way to do that. Lastly, I'm going to talk about a few of the new constructors that I made to make this all a little bit easier. One of them is called look dir up. You give it two vectors. The first vector is the direction you'd like to look, basically this, the, the new z-axis you want. And the second vector is the direction you would like to be up, which is effectively like the y-axis, except that it allows that axis to be not orthogonal to the z-axis. What it will do is it will create a direction in which the look up plane is the plane that contains vector 1 and vector 2. Vector 2 doesn't have to be perpendicular because it will project it to the perpendicular form for making the, the, the z-axis. Let me uh, give an example of that. Let's say that I would like, oh, I accidentally wasn't focused in there. Let's say, for example, that I would like to lock steering to point at the moon position. That's kind of neat. And you can do that. Oops, my SAS is still on. Let me turn that off. And there I am locking my Actually, you know what? Let me time warp so I'm back in the sunlight here. There we go. Try that again so you can actually see. So there I am, pointed in the direction of the moon. My old vector is still there. Why don't I get rid of my old vector? more sensible. So there I am pointed directly at the moon locking my steering to it. But what about my roll? You want to control the roll. Well what I can say is instead of locking the steering to moon position, I could lock it to look dir up moon position comma body position. And that says, look at the moon, but try to point your up axis at the current body. So it's pointing it down to the surface of the planet. And if you draw what that looks like, you can see it in a second. What am I missing? Why didn't it like that? Oh, it did like it. It just took a second. So there it is, my reference frame with Z that way, Y that way, and X that way. Your up axis does not have to be exactly lined up with your Z axis because as long as the two aren't exactly parallel and therefore they can form some kind of a plane, it will be able to deal with that just fine. So that is another handy little thing to have. And hopefully people will find that useful. It will allow them to do things like pick the bank of a plane. If they would like their plane to be banked at a particular angle, they can pick the up axis direction they want it to be facing. Now the other one I want to show is angle axis. <coughs> For that one, you give it a number of degrees, 
and a vector. And it will give you a rotation in which you are rotating that many degrees around that axis vector. But keep in mind it'll actually be reversed of what you think because it's rotating the axes, not the vector. Let me give an example. If I were to lock my steering to heading 90 by 0, that's a very common thing people see, then my ship will aim straight east from here. You can see it on the nav ball. But what if I wanted to control the bank? Or what if I wanted to control the pitch? What I could do is say, okay, let's start from that heading, but then perform an angle axis where I would like to rotate, let's say, 20 degrees around that heading, that heading's starboard vector. Why is it doing that? I'm not sure why I did that. Let me try that again. I'm sorry. Actually, let me just record that. Make this quicker. Let me record that in a uh, variable. Set, let's call it east, to heading 90 by 0 pitch. Now what if I instead wanted to do an angle axis of 20 degrees around the east's starboard vector meaning. And then multiply that by east. Ah, sorry. I don't feel like restarting the tutorial from the beginning, so I'll have to fiddle with this a little bit. There we go. So now I am pitched 20 degrees, rotated around the starboard vector of the uh, east, axis, east direction, I should say. So if you imagine the heading direction of east, which I can show you, the heading east, which I made up earlier, looks like this. And I've just pitched 20 degrees off from it by saying rotate around the east's x-axis. I could just as easily have rotated around its z-axis, or 4 vector. And that would give me a 20 degree bank. So this is going to give people control that they've been looking for over exact bank angles and give them the information they need to make that work. So that pretty much uh, finishes the tutorial. Uh, one more thing I'm going to explain is there is also a function called rotate from to. You give it a vector to start from and a vector to go to and it returns a rotation that would give you um, a movement from one vector to the other. However, I haven't really found this to be as useful as the others because it does lose role information. There's technically an infinite number of different rotations that could get you from vector 1 to vector 2 depending on what you want to do to the role. And this doesn't really narrow down which one you're going to get. So in most circumstances it's probably not what you really want, but it is there. You can use it if you can find a use for it. So hopefully this made directions make a little more sense to people, and sorry for the bits in the middle there where I had to ramble a bit, but I'm hoping this helps. So there you go.